Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. And I have changed some things with my large steam boiler since the last couple of episodes. I got some really great feedback on things. And so one thing I did is, as you can see, these Railcraft tanks holding the steam, they are right up against the boiler. And so the output of the boiler goes directly to the input of the, the tanks. So that is good. I'm still using two separate tanks. I know it's probably not completely necessary, but I do like it for the symmetry, I have to say. Now, since I don't have pipes connecting the boiler to the tank, I had to get rid of that system of detecting when to turn off the boiler based upon it uh, about based upon uh, these tanks being full. So what I've done instead, we'll go down here, is I have detectors on the output. So this is the steam coming out of the tanks and going up to the steam turbines to generate electricity. And this will essentially detect if there is any steam within this pipe section here. And if there's no steam, there'll be no signal, which runs into a NOT gate, which will send a signal from either this one or this one to this OR gate here. And then, so if either one of these are out of steam, this signal will go through. But then what I've done is I've added this state cell, and I believe it's set to, yes, it's set to 50 seconds. It still might be a little bit too long, but that's okay. And what the state cell does is, is when it receives a signal from here, then it will send a signal forward to this AND gate, but it will always run for at least 50 seconds. So it will have a, a signal for at least 50 seconds. And the reason for that, Ungod mentioned that uh, whenever the boiler is turned on, the longer it's on for, the more efficient it is as far as burning the coal and turning it into steam. So before, when I didn't have that, and it would just kind of turn on and off and on and off, it wasn't really all that efficient. So this actually works out better because it will only want to burn uh, the fuel to make steam when one of these railcraft tanks is empty. And, and then when it does, it will burn for enough time that it basically just fills back up this entire tank, which is kind of nice. So it's still not the best and most efficient thing in the world. This could actually be maybe even a little bit smaller. I haven't done like extensive testing or anything like that on it, but uh, it's it's for now reasonable enough that I don't have to babysit it and worry about it. Now this here is just an item pipe and it is connected to a chest that's up there in the floor and that basically makes it so that I don't have to come down here in order to put the fuel into the boiler. I can open up this chest right here, drop in coal, crushed coal or charcoal, whatever I want, and it will go down into the boiler and uh, create steam, which of course is then used for the electricity. Great. Now, up until this point, I've been using all low voltage machinery. So also kind of identified by this word basic, but if we look at, for example, the basic steam turbine if my NEI will update there we go you can see the voltage out on it is LV low voltage and if I go to like the basic assembler the voltage in is 32 low voltage it's a basic assembly machine so all of these machines are low voltage machines I'm creating power with these low voltage steam turbines that power is being put into low voltage battery buffers where I have you know, low voltage batteries so that's okay so far, but if I want to move up, the next thing, of course, would be medium voltage things. So, for example, is as far as the steam turbines go, I think it's called the advanced steam turbine would be the medium voltage version of that. Uh, you have, say, advanced assembler. There we go, advanced assembling machine. You can see that 128 or medium voltage. So. Moving up to the medium voltage is sort of the next step in the electrical line. The problem with that is you need to be able to make medium voltage machine hulls, which makes sense because you had to make low voltage machine hulls to make the low voltage machines.
but the medium voltage machine holes require aluminium plates. Basically, we need to be able to make aluminium. And the only way to make aluminium is in a blast furnace. Now, this has to be the electric blast furnace. And there's lots of things you can make in the electric blast furnace. You can see there's 370 pages. So there's 300, 370 recipes. But obviously the aluminium is very important because that's what we would need in order to move up to medium voltage machinery. So we need to make the electric blast furnace. So these bronze plated blast furnace, this was okay for making steel out of iron and charcoal, but you cannot use it to make the aluminium. So we need to make the electric blast furnace and this should be all of the things I need for it. As you can see here is the electric blast furnace, which is the control block. It tells you that it's a three by three by four, it's hollow in the middle. The controller has to be the front middle at the bottom. And then also at the bottom, there's an input, an output, an energy hatch, and a maintenance hatch. Then in the top middle, there's a muffler hatch and that's going to point straight up. So the air block right above that will have to be empty as usual. Uh, you also see there has to be 16 heating coils which form the two middle layers. And then everything else is made up of heat proof machine casings. So this is the setup that I have that I'll be building right now, the electric blast furnace, control block in the middle center, and then an input and an output. I've got four energy hatches, and I'll talk about that later, maintenance hatch, heat, and then uh, two layers of cooper nickel coil heat casing, heat coils, heating coils, um, which, which is important. And then the muffler hatch will be in the top center uh, pointing upwards and then these heat proof machine casings all around so provided I've done everything correctly I should have what I need to build this thing and I think what I'm gonna do is try to put it over here which may not be ideal but I'm going to build it and I'll be back okay and one final heating coil going there and that should be, it looks like everything has changed colors. So that should be the electric blast furnace. Looks like it's done. I have to do the maintenance on it as usual. So I'll run over here and grab my tools. I know I need wrench, wire cutter, hammer, saw, soft hammer. I think I need the screwdriver and the crowbar. Uh, one of those I don't think I need. It might be the wire cutters that I don't need. It's, it's you know, it can be hard to remember. So do that, 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 not the axe. <laughs> Soft hammer, crowbar, wrench. So is that everything? Let's go back around to the beginning. Yeah, seem to have gotten them all. Yeah, I didn't need the wire cutters. That was the extra one, but that's okay. So this is the electric blast furnace. Now, when using the electric blast furnace, um, does this have a button that will give me recipes? Probably not. It's okay. And the muffler hatch is in the center. It's pointing straight up and I have left that uh, open there. So it should be okay. This is the input. This is what I, where you would put in uh, whatever items it is that you're looking to make. Output would be whatever items are going to come out of it. These four, these, four here are for energy and again I'm going to talk about that in a minute and then of course the maintenance hatch as usual now when we're talking about the electric blast furnace there are a couple of different things to know about it so let's go look at recipes for it so these are the recipes for it and you'll see a couple of different things that are relevant and important so one is the voltage that you need. So here it says 120 EUs per tick, which is supposed to be the same as the voltage. I don't know why it says unspecified there. Uh, I don't I think that's just uh, a mistake or something, but essentially you need 120 EUs per tick. So let's, uh, let's go back. Let's actually just look at the aluminum. So to turn, you know, aluminum dust into an aluminum ingot, the usage 120 EUs per tick, so that's 120 volts, a total of 204,000 uh, EU, so that will take about 85 seconds. 
and heat capacity 1700 K. Now this is important because different recipes in the blast furnace are going to require different amounts of heat. So you, as you can see, there's 1500, 1800, but then there are some that are going to be a lot higher. So there's 1818. And then you can see there is one that's 3000 to make the hot neck quadria ingot. And the heating coils are what determine how, what temperature you can get with your electric blast furnace. So I've used Cooper nickel coils and you can see there it's a base heating capacity of 1800 Kelvin. And these are easy to make because they're just made out of copper and nickel. It's very simple. Then you can upgrade to Camthal coils, which you can see the base heating capacity is 2700 Kelvin or nichrome coil blocks where it's 3600. So basically any recipe that for the, um, let's go back to the blast furnace, any recipe in the blast furnace that is 1800 Kelvin or less would, I would be able to make with these heating coils that I have now. If I want to make the other stuff, I'm going to have to make my heating coils out of these uh, different materials. But these materials are actually made in the blast furnace. So, uh, nope, 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 where is it at? Oh, uh, well, okay. You have to put it in the bathroom, in the, <laughs> the vacuum freezer, but the hot canthal ingots are made, as you can see, in the blast furnace, and they require 1800 Kelvin. So you need Cooper nickel coils first in order to make the canthal coils. And then I think with the canthal coils, you can make the nichrome coils. So you kind of have to work your way up to the better. Uh, yeah, see that requires 2700. So you have you you can make the Cooper nickel coil blocks without the blast furnace, but then you need the blast furnace to make the canthal coil blocks. Then you can put the canthal coil blocks in and then you can use that heat to make the nichrome coil blocks. Okay, so that's the first uh, thing that you have to know is the heat and that's defined that is required for the recipes and that is uh, done by what kind of heating coils you have in there. Okay, the next thing is as I mentioned the voltage. So for aluminium it's 120 volts, 120 EU per tick. For other recipes there's 120 some of them might be more than that. I thought I saw some that were higher than 120 volts. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Uh, there was one that was at 100 volts. Okay. But I thought for certain that there were some that were more than that. And maybe there are, maybe they're not. I'm not sure. Um, but, and I don't know if you provide it with more than... Oh, there we go. There we go. There's one that was 500. So to make... Oh, to break Galena, Galena dust down into silver and lead looks like requires 500 volts. Yikes. Okay, or 480 volts to make electrical steel. So there's different amount of volts that you would need. Now, going back to the aluminium, 120 volts. And as we've pointed out before with the steam turbines, a basic steam turbine, the low voltage steam turbine only provides 32 volts. The medium voltage steam turbine provides 128 volts. So you would need 128 volts. You would need a medium voltage steam turbine in order to produce 120 volts. But of course you need aluminum to make the medium voltage steam turbine. So how do you get 120 volts when you can't make the machinery that makes 120 volts. Well, you have to make four of these low voltage energy hatches. So that's why I have one, two, whoop, three, and then four. And so each one of these will take in 32 volts. So 32 and then a second one is going to be 64. And then a fourth one is 128. And so I believe that's why you need four. Now, I think I read somewhere that you can only use three. I'm not exactly sure how that works, but I don't know about that aspect of things. So anyway, I just know that I can make four and I should be fairly safe with four of them. And then I can hook those up to the power coming out of here 
from my batteries and I should do okay with that. So that's the next step that I need to do is hook up the power to it. So let me do that. I'm also going to macerate some alum aluminum so we can watch it cook away. Now, I didn't mention this in my previous video about the electricity, but on your cables, you'll, I talked about how much voltage can go through them and how much amperage can go through, through them. I didn't talk about the loss, and you can see the third line on there, the loss per meter per amper, you lose one volt per meter per amper, amp bridge. So the longer you run the cables, the more power you're going to lose from the cables because they will lose a bit of cable over time. In other words, if you run this cable for 32 blocks, by the end of that, you, there will be no power coming through it whatsoever. So you don't want to run really long lengths of cable unless you're using transformers to step up the power and then step back down the power and do all that kind of stuff, which we're not in a position to be able to do right now. Anyway, so yeah, so just keep that in mind that you don't want your, your cables to run super far. Uh, right now, I'm you know, pretty much only considering everything to be temporary, so I'm not too terribly worried about it, but it is something that you'll definitely want to keep in mind. All right, I have everything hooked up with power. I've got some crushed aluminum ore. I don't think I can put aluminum ore in here and have it work. No, it doesn't seem to. I've got to turn the aluminum ore into uh, aluminum dust. So it's all right, we can make some aluminum dust, no big deal. So let's put an aluminum dust in here, and is it going to work? Doesn't seem to be working. Oh, I have to turn it on. <laughs> For that, I need a soft hammer. Boop, there we go. So actually, let's, let's try this again with the crushed aluminum ore. Let's take that out. Let's put a crushed aluminum ore in there. Turn it on. Ah, it took it. Is it? it stopped working. Did it run out of power? Maybe it ran out of power. Nope, batteries are still full. Maybe it's not getting enough power. Hmm. I don't know. All right, let's try it with aluminum dust. So let me put you in there and turn you on. And it stopped. And I don't have any output. It's enabled, but it's not doing something right. So I'm guessing that I'm not giving it enough power fast enough. Oh, that kind of sucks, but I can fix that and I will work on it. I'll be right back. Okay, so what I've decided to do is to throw a battery buffer with a full charged lithium battery on each one of these LV Energy hatches. Now, in actuality, I have reason to believe that this still won't work, but Let's just see what happens. Okay, it's now enabled. And I guess let me put in a piece of aluminum ore. Okay, and there it take. It's on. It's draining power. And it's off again. Yes. So I was afraid that it wouldn't work. And it definitely did not work. Okay, so let me back. I, I, I believe that I know why it didn't work. Um, let me make some changes. I'll come back and then I'll explain what went wrong. Okay, so I am ready to try again. I'm going to put in a piece of crushed aluminum ore and turn the machine on. It has taken the aluminum ore. It is still on. It is still on seems to be lasting a while now remember from NEI here that the blast furnace is going to use 204,000 EU at 120 EU per tick so it's going to take 85 seconds to process now it is still on so that is a fairly 
good sign that it is working at least i hope so i really do hope so because i need aluminium so badly so 85 seconds i'll be back in 85 seconds well the machine has shut off and i don't have any aluminium hmm. all right i will try again okay so uh, those of you that know greg tech probably screaming at me because I'm not very bright, as I've mentioned many times in the past, but I was putting in crushed aluminum ore, and as you can see here, crushed aluminum ore requires 1.2 million EU, 510 seconds. So I wasn't providing it anywhere near enough power for that. Uh, the impure al aluminum dust as well requires 1.2 million eu but the regular purified not pu uh, let's see purified aluminium dust would also require 1.2 million but regular aluminium dust is what can be done in 204,120 volts so what i need to do is i need to take this i think if i just dump this impure aluminum dust into there and pick it back up I get regular aluminum dust now this should turn into aluminum so try it again and wait for 85 seconds it's gone and hopefully it will appear somewhere over here hey I just got an achievement as well so apparently it did work. Yes, there we go. I have an aluminum ingot. Oh my goodness. Okay, so a little bit of trial and error on my part to figure out how to do it. But now I have aluminum and the fireworks are still going off. I have the aluminum. That means I can make aluminum plates, aluminum rods, you know, all the little stuff that you need to make. And that means that I can start working towards the medium voltage machinery, the medium voltage steam turbines. Um... So I believe that when you upgrade from this basic steam turbine to the advanced steam turbine that it will produce more power from the steam. And maybe not. I don't know. It does say the fuel efficiency goes to 50%, which doesn't sound better. Now, I might be able to work on making a large steam turbine. I'll have to look at what's required oh no i've got to do high voltage for that so i don't think i'm ready for that quite yet but anyway i can start upgrading things i can start upgrading my machinery and all that kind of good stuff now that i can make aluminium now one other thing that i did is i changed these battery buffers and to put two batteries in each one because each one of these low voltage energy hatches actually any of the energy hatches let me do that real quick in here oops energy hatch any of the energy hatches it doesn't say it on here but in the Wikipedia it told me that each of these energy hatches is actually capable of taking in two amps so it's taking in 32 volts at two amps which would be in other words 32 times 2 or 64 uh, volts total and so two of these would give you 128 volts. And remember, we needed 120 volts to make the aluminum. However, because there's this problem here, and each one of these problems reduces the efficiency by 10%, so you're getting 128, but then minus 10%. And then that's why you'd want at least a third one my line of reasoning is I didn't realize they were two amps and I thought they were 32 volts each and 32 times four would make the 128. So there's why I was, uh, I was mistaken. And of course I was mistaken on a lot of things and made a lot of different errors, but I eventually got to the point where I have aluminum. And one of the first things I might do is, I don't know, I may, up, I may make a medium voltage energy hatch for the electric blast furnace that will reduce uh, this whole battery usage thing but maybe I need to make these steam turbines first I don't know it's a tough decision but the point is I now have aluminium 
thanks to my electric blast furnace. Now, those of you that know Greg Tech, Ungod, when you watch this, or Jason, if you watch this, one thing that I have had trouble finding online is what is the um, what is the production line in Greg Tech? What is the order of machinery uh, that you use? So, you know, I know that there are electrolyzers and centrifuges and um, we got the smelters, we got the benders, we got the canners, we got the extractors and the uh, pulverizers, we've got extruders, lathe. I understand those are for making the machinery, but the electrolyzers and the ore washing plant uh, and, and, and all that kind of stuff, what is the... Um, what is the process? You know, does it do you do you macerate things down? Because I guess what I'm getting at is let's take a look at say the aluminum, the aluminium. I'm sorry, the aluminium. So uh, I put it into the to I put the aluminium ore into a macerator and I get this crushed aluminium ore. I can then turn that into aluminium dust, or I can pulverize it into. Um, aluminum dust and bauxite should I be doing that first should I be throwing it into an ore washing plant or into the thermal centrifuge I know I won't be able to build all these machiner all this machinery right now but my question is what is the the process so you know if I throw it into a macerator and I get this impure pile then does it then go into a centrifuge directly to the blast furnace the aluminum once I have that um, there's a it's probably not the mixer, the chemical reactor. Okay, so in other words, you know, is there a defined machinery line? You know, they say, well, first you go in the macerator, then you go into the pulverizer, then you go into the forge hammer, then you go into this. That's what I'm kind of curious about. So, so if anybody knows that information, or if you can uh, point me to something online that gives me that information, that would be great. Just kind of curious as to what I would be aiming for as far as the Greg Tech production line goes. All right, so electric blast furnace is done. I now have aluminum. I can now make medium voltage electrical equipment, which is really nice. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them for me down below. I really like reading them. I really like responding to them. It's great to keep in touch with everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time.